Testing, testing, one, two, three. <laughs> am I looking here or am I looking at you? What's happening? <laughs> Hi, <laughs> I'm Kara Goucher and I'm running the Leadville Marathon and I'm probably gonna die. So <laughs> great. I'm kind of coaching myself. I have a training partner and we come up with workouts together. A couple times a month, I email my coaches, Mark Whitmore and Heather Burroughs, and I tell them what I've done. And especially when I'm like wondering between like maybe I have two different ideas for a workout and then I'll ask them their advice. So they're kind of advising me from afar, but really I've just kind of made it up myself. Like I feel like I need more downhill running and I feel like I need a lot of long hill repeats and I've just sort of like made it up. This is sort of a venture to see if I would be interested in running further. So this is gonna take me like between four and four and a half hours to do. And that'll be the, the longest I've ever run and been on my feet. My goal is to just run my race, like not go out too hard, not do anything crazy or stupid. I would really like to negative split the course. So if I come through in like under two hours at halfway, then I know I'm probably screwed and went out way too hard. So I'm just trying to like feel it and be okay with what it is and really just get through it. I've gone to a couple like meetups where women who have run it before were there and like shared their experience and that was so valuable because in my mind I had it that it was 13 miles up and then 13 miles down. But it's not, it's up and down and up and down and up and down, peaks out at over 13,000 feet and then goes up and down on the way back down. Nothing too, too technical, maybe just at the top it's a little bit more technical. So it's hard, you know, it starts at 10,000 feet and it goes up to 13,000 feet. I'm, I'm nervous about the elevation. Um, it could be like sunny and hot at the bottom and a little bit cold and snowy at the top and muddy in the middle. So it'll be, it'll be interesting. I think my mantras are a little bit different just because road marathons is always about like sticking to the pace, staying on the edge and like keeping myself alert of staying on these paces. Whereas this is something that's different. Like it doesn't, if I run faster, it doesn't like get done sooner. My mantras are more like embracing the pain, feel the pain, taking the pain. It's just a little bit different attitude of like, this is gonna be a suffer fest. And the more I can manage it and accept that it's gonna be a suffer fest. And so most of my mantras are like, taking the pain, you know, have a lot of patience and just like embrace it because it's just gonna hurt for four and a half hours. It's just like the reality. After the announcement went out, there was just like so many people reaching out to me, offering to help coach me, offering to help show me around town, offering to like send me gear that I might need. That was really incredible because I feel like in the elite marathoning world, we're friendly with each other, but we're all also kind of a, a threat to one another. So like you're friendly, but you're like a little bit guarded because you don't want to give too much because someone might take your spot on the Olympic team or take your spot on the world championship team. Whereas in the trail community, um, it was just like overwhelming. How can I help you? We're so excited to have you. People have really helped me out a lot and it's been great. I'm excited to be a part of this community. When I first started, the hardest thing was letting go of worrying about pace. I have spent 20 some years of my life staring at my watch and caring about my pace, like checking my splits all the time. So to let all of that go and just challenge myself like more technically. That was actually really hard because I would be running at a place that I was uncomfortable but I'd still be trying to check my watch and I'd be like, oh my gosh, I just split a 12 minute mile and I'd be freaking out about that. And now, I mean, I'm, I'm afraid of the descents. Like I'm, I'm not afraid of running up any technical trails but coming down I am. So that's my biggest challenge right now is just remaining calm and trusting my footwear and trusting the strength of my legs and my feet. I am super excited to complete this because it's so out of my personal comfort zone. It's longer, not not uh, in distance, but in time. It's much longer than anything I've done before. The terrain is so different. I've never raced at really high altitude. I've never even run up as high as it's gonna be. 
So it's such a big challenge, but I think I'm excited to complete it and to like officially be like a trail runner that completed a race. And Leadville is such a iconic series. And so I'm excited to be able to say like, oh yeah, I did a Leadville race too. Kat Bradley took me out on, my, on a run and she had called me the day before and said, I'm gonna do this easy 15 mile run, but I know her well enough to know it wasn't gonna be easy. And so we ran up and over Flagstaff Mountain, then we went to Green Mountain and the trail kind of goes by or you can go up and summit. And she was like, well, we're going up and summit. And I was like, okay. So I'm like crawling on my hands and getting up there. And then actually we got to the top and she's like, well, you haven't quite summited yet. You had to go to the top of this rock to officially summit. And I was just like so out of my comfort zone. Like if it was anyone else, I would have just been like, yeah, I'm good. You know, like I made it, but I was like, she like hopped up on that rock and I was like, Ooh. okay, so I did it. And it was, it was great. Like the view was sensational. I had my first official summit. And then also we had over 3,100 feet or uh, 3,100 feet of vertical climb that day. So that was also a record for me because I'd been broken into the 2000s, but I had never done over 3,000 before. So. It was hilarious because that run wrecked me for like four days, but uh, it was great. And it was like eye-opening to me of just like how much more there is to explore and do. So it, it hasn't changed super much. The difference is that I don't have someone just like bringing me my nutrition anymore. My coach would just drive up and hand me my water bottle every 5K and would hand me like a gel and then I would take it and throw it and he would go and get it. So I never had to worry about like bringing my own stuff and storing it somewhere. And now I'm off in the woods by myself. So I had to learn how to like bring it myself. I started putting Telos in my coffee this fall just because I saw a nutritionist and she was telling me now that I'm a little bit older, I need a little bit more protein in my diet. So I've still done that because especially now with like all the new movement I'm putting my body through, it's important to have that protein. I got a vest and this is actually kind of funny. Like I didn't even know how these water bottles work. So the first time I used it, I filled it with my noon and I went out on a run and I was like, this bottle's broken. Like this bottle's broken, you can't get anything out of it. And I was running with my training partner and he was like, uh, yeah, you gotta open it and you gotta bite it. And I was like, ah. So anyway, if you're a newbie and you didn't know that, you're not the only one. But I usually have one with my noon um, endurance in it and then one that's just plain water. I've been using these spring gels. The thing that I really like about it is that they digest well. Like they do not upset my stomach at all and I have a kind of sensitive stomach. And sometimes some of the gels are like really zingy sweet and then they kind of like slosh for a little bit. And I've had no problems with these at all. Welcome to my closet. These are the only non Wazelle items I own. Everything else in my life, besides a few pair of jeans, is all Wazelle. Running jackets, then it goes into like thicker running shirts and jackets, into super comfy sweatshirts, into long sleeves that I don't like to run in, I just like to lounge in, into t-shirts that I really like, into tank tops, and then into finally into dresses. So, you know, I have a lot of Wazelle clothes. A little bit of changes. So I never really understood the whole pocket thing. Like you might remember the KG tight had no pockets and people were like, there's no pockets. And I was like, why would you need pockets? And now I'm like, oh yeah, you need like your phone and you need a gel and you need maybe some gloves that when you're down here, it's fine. But as you climb up the trail, it gets colder. So I understand pockets a little bit more now. They're a little bit more important in my tights and my shorts than they used to be. All of my drawers, including my underwear drawer, are organized like this. And this actually doesn't look that good for me, but you can look down. I organize all my <laughs> shirts by color, and then I fold them so I can see exactly what I'm grabbing. And then down here we have my favorite spandos and long sleeves. And you know, it's a little obsessive, actually. I saw a mountain lion and it was actually really terrifying. So I was running just a block down from here where we are right now. And I was coming alongside a construction truck and I was coming along the length of it. And right as I was about to pass it, a mountain lion came running up the front of it and we totally surprised each other. And it, it took like a second. I thought like, that's a weird dog. That's not a dog, that's not a cat. And then I was like, holy shit, that's like a mountain lion. 
and it immediately turned and like pounded away like its footsteps were so heavy and it ran darted back down into the woods and I just did everything wrong. So just as a PSA, you're supposed to make yourself really big and like back away slowly and don't turn your back on it because they go for your neck. But what I did was I turned around and sp sprinted like Usain Bolt the opposite way. It was so scary. I, I was like shaking and trembling and I needed to get past where I saw it to get back out to where I wanted to go. And I kept like running up to it and then I get too scared and sprint away. And I called Adam and he came and picked me up.